I'm just gonna um, first talk about what would happen if I'm not available ever again. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, the board will run the, the organization. Um, I'm setting up my Gmail where if it's inactive for three months, it gets with, to the board member. So you'll have all my files and my YouTube, or well, the YouTube. Um, and, um, but basically I would like Annalyn to take over as the CEO and then Aura, you would be the VP, like the, like the right hand in command. And then um, CFO, there's a couple prospects. My first priority would be to, if you could reach out to uh, Abe, um, Ibrahim, he's still on our Slack channel to see if he wants to, you know, take, like, get back on, and maybe Carson, too. Um, and if not them, then contact my sister um, and contact my friend Alex, um, which I gave you the numbers for. This is for CFO, and I think the CFO is important because they're going to be really helping us with the, the, the business growth of it because it's like, we still need our numbers and our budgets and some kind of business plan to legitimize what we're advocating. So we, when we go to, to people with money, they can see that we know what we're talking about. We're already showing effectiveness in terms of like the people we're influencing inside this project, right? So it's just a matter of bringing on a competent financial business person to really shape the business plan and enhance it more. This is knock on wood in case I'm not gonna make it. So, I mean, I'm gonna make it, but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of where, where my headspace is. Cause I, I, yeah. So, and I'm gonna give you the credentials to, um, SiteGround because they're in charge of the hosting server. You need SiteGround uh, because if we don't pay our 85 a month, then the website's done. Like all that work gone, right? So that's like a most basic minimum that we need, which is why we need a CFO. So we need someone to like help us focus on money, 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 money to run it. Um, so yeah, monthly for me is really small right now. I mean, it's not small. It's something, um, but I pay about a hundred dollars a month just to run the love story, which is great because it's not a lot. It's not a big business cost for us. If you look at the big picture of what we're actually doing. Um, but in terms of where we are in the board, right? I know I've given each of you kind of do a little thing like social media here and I'm doing a little Google AdWords there and we're building the program here. And I'm like, oh my God, we're so, we're, it's slow and steady, which is good. But I feel like, okay, am I not focusing on something? Is there a limiting be belief that is kind of hindering where we need, wh where we could do to accelerate, to like grow it, you know what I mean? Um, so a couple things I wanna show you. I'm going to share a screen and feel free to just pause me um, if you have any questions or you have something to share. But I just want to review our, our game plan, like the big picture of what Love Story is, right? Um, hold on. This one. Well, this is essentially the program for the Love Story right? The producer's playbook is designed so people could experience agape love because when they lose someone they love and their whole identity and all their efforts have been put in that basket and it's gone, they suddenly feel like life is empty and meaningless. And then they go into this existential crisis and then they lose themselves. They don't, nothing tastes like anything, you know what I mean, right? So like what our program aims to do is to help them 
discover through micro action taking um, an awareness of a of a agape love, right? And so that's in one Corinthians thirteen twelve through the mirroring, um, through interviewing, just you know, a community like to see the world as as one. To kind of sound a little raver chicky, which I was in high school, um, you know. So this is what we're aiming to do, right? I mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but I just want to uh, give people, give all of us, kind of like the the point, because sometimes we're so in it we forget. So here's the overview. We want to build up to this point, right? I don't know the timeline. It's out of my control. I've gave, you know, but I could, I could, I could estimate. I would like at the end of 2020 to set this up, the power of 13. At the end of 2020, I like at least the program to be completely built, right? Because we have the structure, we have people buy in that have tried it out. Um, and this would be like every quarter if, I mean, this is a perfect like flow. Like once we built up the 4T model system, this is how it would run. Right. Um, and then three acts for each producer, they'll experience it in 13 weeks or maybe more. Like, like I said, I'm not time restricted to this. This could, this could be like lifetime, right? Cause that's why we have a lifetime membership. If you're going through grief, it didn't take me 13 weeks. So I can't advertise that, oh, you're going to experience pain and passion in 13 weeks. I can't guarantee that because that's not realistic. That wasn't my story. You know, it took me nine years to finally be okay with, with like this feeling of like letting go. It took me nine years. So who am I to say it's going to take 13 weeks? Right. So, but the idea is 13 showcases. I'm just saying these groups. All right. Hold on a second. So these are the three programs. Sorry. This probably needs to be updated a little bit. So one thing I'm going to work on is just cleaning up the business plan for us so we can really just see okay we can do this we can do this because you know there's one thing to think big picture and another to be realistic right so I'll, I'll update the 2019 operating budget we need to um, Anna Lynn and I will be working on just getting the budget for the producer's playbook. Let's see. Any questions so far about just where the headspace is for the program of our organization? Good, Aura, you good? Okay, cool. Like how much we're gonna charge? All that detail, we'll just we'll just hash it out over time, right? I think this year, 2020, is really just hyper focusing on building the online program and making it reality for all of us. Um, and Annalyn and I are working on auditing Act One again. Where she's she's auditing it because me and Bria were designing it, so. Um, Annalyn's now going to be auditing Act 1, giving us feedback. Um, and ORIU, me and Amy had a great conversation last week about what we should be charging for the Documentary Producers Program. Um, we could follow up on that and really have a another meeting and really... And I'll be updating it too, so then we could really audit. I think you got we got to take a step back, and then come back to it, and then see it again from a user's perspective. So if you can, Aura, go back to it again and come from a user perspective again, and see like, oh, I don't understand this. 
we still need this. Um, you know, and, and some of the things Amy brought up was um, how it's a lot of work, right? And who would pay for all that work? But then I thought about it, I'm like, what's college, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we, we will be, um, I think we will have a, a solid group. Aura? Um, oh yeah, no, or I was also gonna say, um, I mean, compared to, you know, self-help um, programs and, and things, um, I mean, I've definitely seen a lot of people offer, you know, like bi-monthly Zoom meetings for a set amount of time and charge like five grand, which is way, I don't think we should do that, but I'm just saying that like, that's just for like, you know, you know um, working on your business from like spiritual perspective kind of classes. So I just think that there are people who would, but of course I think that that kind of a price tag actually really limits it. Um, and it, 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 that kind of omits, um, intersectionalism and kind of keeps it towards a like primarily rich white person base, which we don't want. So I think that it's important to have, um, a, a, a price tag that is, that is affordable. Um, yeah. So for now, but I also think, what? No, go ahead. Well, I do think that there is something though for having a, like a, something that's not quite like, I think there's something for having a slightly higher price tag just for optics, but then having a really clear avenue and like how to do that, not in, in like, not in fine print, but like bigger print and more obvious and nothing too overwhelming and like how to apply for it for a really, really discounted because then it kind of sets the worth, the value at like. Uh, at a much higher price because but I, I know we've talked about that yeah but, uh, yeah it's, it's hard to come up with an exact number but that is kind of what I'm thinking as far as just perceived value and then also accessibility but agreed agreed I would say um for now I'm looking at well I already put it online but like five hundred dollars discounted at not discounted but like 2020 special pricing $99, um, but after 2020, 2021, you probably do um, a one-time lifetime membership fee of $500 with a scholarship option. And once you're in and you're a member, um, you know, you have lifetime access to all the resources and the community, but if you do want to contribute a, a story, um, for the first story, their membership could go towards the setup publishing costs for it. But every story after that, they have to just pay a minimum fee, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. And they will have lifetime access to purchasing the diaries and all diaries, any love story journals at, at membership cost, mm -hmm. kind of like Costco, you know, yeah. like it's I think that's a, good, a good cost. Like, I think that's a really good price point the 500, but with a $99 kind of thing, I think, I think, and then the scholarship, I think that's a really good price point. Yeah. Yeah. We'll propose it and then okay. see how, how it goes. Okay. No, until we advertise it and right. <laughs> do it um i wanted to show you what else do i want to show you oh yeah this was something i originally wrote down way back and i feel like we, we could revisit it now um so this is something we wanted to talk about from the beginning right so what are some needs we definitely want a grant director again so he or she could take charge um, with building a grant team and getting them the right grant. 
on our behalf. Um, maybe a, instead of a journal sales, yeah, a journal sales. Like we want our journals to be in colleges. Hold on, I'm gonna read Annalyn's. Okay, got it, Annalyn, I got you. Um, and then journal sales, yeah, we, we just want these diaries to be in the hands of the masses. And the more it becomes popular, like Chicken Soup for the Soul, the more people will come to us. So I think having someone to like just focus, hyper-focus on getting all the affiliates, meaning all the contributors, all the artists to start reselling it or like promoting it getting some kind of affiliate link for it is important. Uh, we need a sponsorship director again. Um, and I'll work on the, the uh, program. And then the fundraising concert, which, you know, Annalyn's really interested in that. So I don't know if you're still interested in that panel, but something, yeah. Um, and then other donation ideas, you know. Um, PR, oh yeah, did you, I know I kind of asked you to do that. Would you mind sharing a little bit of what kind of ideas you have? Um, yeah, so I, I have the document, Sorry, I saw it kind of late last night and I had a bit of a migraine, um, but I did, <clears throat> um, hang on, let me move this window. Sorry for the migraine, by the way. Oh, no, we're, yeah, no, it happens. Um, it's like a muscular thing. How do I um, add, can I bring up the, the, the file to show it? How yeah. do I do that? Um, you could either share. Oh, share. Okay. Sorry, let me... And then I could just repost the file to the board after you're done presenting, after the meeting. Okay, okay, sure. Um, give me one second, let me just. I'm reading Annalyn's. Um, hello. Oh, thanks, love. <laughs> All right, hang on, let me find PR. Yeah, uh, Annalyn, down the line, if if you want to specialize in something, just kind of like a fundraiser, like a like some kind of um, live concert fundraising thing, Annalyn. So um, we'll talk about that for, for later. But just ideas on how to get money. So everything that is shared in the board is like how we can get money, 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 money. <laughs> Wait, how do I? Share? Yeah, can I upload it or do I just? Um, if you open your screen, I can, we okay. can see it. And then okay. you could go on the bottom avatar of this and click share. You see the Zoom? Do um, I say desktop or do I say? Whatever showing your document. Um, maybe I guess desktop. Maybe I, desktop. I think open system preferences. Sorry about that. I've never. It's okay. You know, I tried to do this last time. Zoom will not be able to record the contents of your screen until it is quit. Um, okay, why don't you link it to us then? And then I'll just share screen it. Okay, yeah, that sounds better. That, okay, let me just do that. I apologize. That was, I'm not very um, knowledged in Zoom, still learning. Okay. So let me just open it up and I'll just... You know what? Let me, um, I think I have it. 
So I'm gonna. Do I upped. I updated it just a tiny bit. Um, not a lot. Here it is, though. Um, it's pretty much exactly the same. Um. I did add a little asterisk though on the budget part and said, okay, so it's, it's shared. Um, I'll share a screen and then you can tell me where to go. Okay. Yeah, I would just scroll down. Really, I think the most um, applicable part is, um, oh gosh, hang on. Okay, so page, do, do, do. Let me just scroll down. Um, okay, so under, okay, so implementation strategy, okay. and it starts at the bottom of page 14. All right, let's go to 14. All right, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> okay, and also just the, something that is isn't not um, exact are the numbers because this was like a mock-up plan for college. So, you know, like the budget plan that I, that it's in here and like all the numbers associated with it need to be tweaked because they're not accurate. They're just like the mock-up part. So I tried to make this as applic applicable to the love story as possible. As far as like scope and like de in and depth, but as far as the financial aspect, um, please just take that with a grain of salt. Um, so uh, basically, I think that what we need to focus on are the implementation goals. Um, and so, hey, wait, hang on, not the implement. Um, Primarily the persuasion tools. So sorry, if you want to keep scrolling down to page 18. Mm -hmm. um, wait, am I? Da, 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 da. Okay, sorry. Go, if you go down to page 20, actually. Um, okay, so keeping track as we grow. I think that that is really important um, for us um, that we, when we do these meetings, I think we need to, and once we kind of figure out exactly what our budget is and, 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 you know, as, but as we do grow, I think we should try to come up with visuals for everyone to share. Um, and just because that seems to be a basic tenet of public relations and, um, what I gathered was that it can really be anything like, well, we do this. So this is visual, but when we are talking about metrics, I think that it's good for us to have like even really simple, like pie charts or bar charts yeah, or something metrics. that we can <clears throat> add to with like contrasting either colors or segments so that we know what was changed, you know? So when we're, discussing um, where we're at, like as far as, um, you know, people who have joined or um, hits that we get on social media after shares. And, and you know, we should be trying, trying to like organize that as much as possible in whatever way makes sense for whatever it is that we're doing. Um, but let's see, so there was that. And then a little lower, um, I just had these ideas um, kind of laid out for what we should be doing um, uh, for public relations as far as like outreach, um, <clears throat> reach via influencers. Um, you know, our product already, like what our service and product is um, already kind of uh, based on the personal stories of influencers. So the feel like that shouldn't be too difficult because if we've already had these people be interviewed, they're part of 
you know, they're in these documentaries. Not all of them are like influencers, but they're all, you know, they're all artists and surely they all want this product to be shared because it, it will reflect on their PR as well. So, um, I feel like that should not be difficult. Um, but having buzz marketing campaigns every quarter, um, you know, was something I feel like that we should do where we reach out to these influencers and ask them, um, if they would be willing to share like a short video or a post about their experience being interviewed by the love story or something, or saying, um, trying to like, even if they just share like a screenshot of the book, you know, just be like, Hey, I was part of this program. Um, we could like streamline that and make it easier for them to do by coming up with like hashtags or being like, Hey, so this quarter we're thinking about doing a buzz marketing campaign based on, um, you know, my love story interview, or it could be more catchy than that. Like, would you be willing to share like a 30 second, um, video or a post using this hashtag? Um, <clears throat> So let's see. I feel like I went a little, okay. So I need to go higher up. I'm trying to find, yeah, I apologize. The... Okay. No, this is good work. Oh, thank this you. Give me ideas on like who our leadership board team should, would be and how it would look like. Um, I think that, oh, okay. Actually, can do you mind scrolling up to page seven? I think that that is. Okay, so research is really important. I feel like you you're already on top of that. Um, I mean, you've done so much research. Um, oops, I'm sorry if I just flashed you. I'm okay. <laughs> Zion is nursing. Um, so the more research you do, obviously, and the, and the more organized you are as far as keeping track with everything, kind of like it all just streamlines into the effectiveness of like any PR campaign. Um, so <clears throat> there were some things that I mentioned in this paper. Um, so constituencies according to age graphics. So I think you mentioned at one point, like social media an analytics um, point to, we have like a 18 to 34 year olds. Is that what it was? Or college students. Um, so I feel like we should, that's a pretty big age demographic. Um, but I feel like we could even, we could expand it. Um, because going back to research, uh, mental health stats points to broader potential constituencies. Um, so, you know, really if there's about 40% of the population was struggling with heightened anxiety in 2018, um, that's like a huge stat, you know? <laughs> I mean, we could say like half the population, like, that, like our product could probably apply to like half of the population. Um, but I feel like there are a couple things that we could do. Like we could expand the age demographics of the constituencies in, um, by focusing on, um, sorry, what was so yeah, I guess I was saying that like, as far as customers go, we could, probably easily get this to, you know, get this book out, our books and our programs out to older people. I really don't think that age should matter. I think that the everything is kind of, it's like all encompassing and it includes everyone, but there are certain things that we could do to kind of make it a little catchier for people. Like every now and then we could do a camp, we could do a, a buzzword campaign that applies to older people or younger people just to kind of keep trying to expanding it, if that makes sense. Um, and so, you know, I was trying to get a hold of that one 
a young uh, lady, she's a teenager, the climate activist. Um, unfortunately, that didn't work. But, um, you know, as long as you have permission and everything from from their um, legal guardians and uh, it shouldn't be difficult kind of like seeking out um, younger people like teenagers if they have because I feel like we shouldn't limit um, a story about remarkable life change to older people yeah. and I think that I think that um, if you were to like average the age of everyone who's been interviewed I think it would tend to lean older than the demographic that we are marketing towards. And I think that we should try to bridge that gap a little bit by and make it more, because it already is relatable, but we would make it even more relatable if we were like targeting it. Well, if we were just occasionally trying to be like, okay, let's interview this like 16 or 17 year old artist, because there are so many young people who are just brilliant and who are doing like really cool things we just have to kind of like find their stories and i know that that's um it's like easier for us i mean the older a human being is like obviously they're gonna have done more things so then it they become more known um but that was just one idea was that if we found an occasional artist who was even even 18 but you know just like really kind of on the younger spectrum that that would really like appeal to kind of this group of individuals who are about to become young adults. They're like ripe for like feeling really intense anxiety and depression, you know, cause that happens like um, not just biologically when a person, you know, kind of gets to a certain age. Cause I think they say a lot of mental illness kind of hits that around like, you know, like early adulthood um, but also just like the natural flow of life can be really like overwhelming for a lot of people, um, especially, you know, like a really weak, uh, weakened economy. Um, so anyways, uh, expanding the age demographics of TLS's constituencies. So there's that. Can I make a comment on that? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I love what you're saying because it helps me and the board refocus what this is all about um one idea i'm just throwing it out there is to to immediately sooner than later find a um a brand ambassador or marketing director um or even a whatever that title is but that person is responsible for contacting colleges to get the green light on okay we're gonna get all these journals out to the students in your offices or counseling centers or whatever and then that same person will get x amount of sponsorships from companies that are interested in marketing to that demographic mm -hmm. um by donating or yeah donating to our organization so we could print out these diaries and then what we're going to do is we're going to gift it to yeah. our market. And in the diary, it would say, if this helps you donate to our nonprofit, uh -huh. right? And that way we are going to find and bring those people in because in the diaries, it will say, you know, you want to share your journal entry? Okay. 